Welcome back to CS201 Walkthroughs. Today we're going to be talking about factoring and power sets for some of the last questions in homework one. So first we're going to do some factoring review, then we're going to talk about what a power set is and how to think about it in homework one, and then we're going to talk about combining them to get all factors. So quick, uh, first some quick factoring review. A factor is the same as a divisor, I guess. It is anything that divides a given number with no remainder. So let's do an example. Example: 24 has factors of 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 12, and 24. Let's do another one just for fun. 10 has factors 1, 2, 5, and 10. I miss any? I don't think so. All right, a prime number prime numbers prime number has no factors other than 1 and itself. So a good example would be something like 7. 7 is not divisible by 1, or sorry, by 2, or 3, or 4, or 5, or 6, but it is divisible by 1 and 7. 1 and 7 are its only factors. Okay, and here we're only dealing with integers. Let's get another one. How about 13? 13, I think, only has 1 and 13 are its only factors. So a prime factor is a factor that is prime. So let's do something like the prime factorization of 24 is, well, we had all the factors up here. Let's just remove the ones that aren't prime. So 2 is prime because it's only divisible by 1 and 2. 3 is prime. It's only divisible by 1 and 3. 4 is not because it's divisible by 2. 6 is not because it's divisible by one and three, uh, 2 and 3. 12 is not because it's divisible by a lot of things. 24 is not because it's divisible by a lot of things. So the prime factorization, some, I guess one might not be included in this. Is 1 a prime? Hold on. Let's check. Why some people say, okay, there's some debate over whether one is a prime. I'm sure some of you might have uh, fierce opinions on that. Uh, the prime factorization for 24 would be 2 and 3 are the only prime factors. I guess the prime factorization would be 2 times 2 is 4 times 3 gets us to 12 times 2 again. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 is the prime factorization for 24. To get all of the factors of 24, to get from this prime factorization back to all of these factors, we can use something that's called a power set. So first let's go over what a power set is, and then we'll come back to that concept. A power set, I think the best way to explain it is all the possible combinations of elements in a given set. So let's take the set 1, 2, 3. I'm going to go over all the possible ways that we can take elements from this. Well, we could have none of them. We could have just one. We could have just two. We could have just three. We could have any two elements, so one and two. We could have two and three. We could have one and three. Or we could have all three of them, right? One, two, three. Okay, so there's our power set of one, two, three. <clears throat> This looks a little bit disorganized. I'm not sure if this is an easy way to come up with it computationally. So how would we do a power set in racket or in some sort of computation? Well, I'm gonna ask you to think about it this way. Let's do the power set of zero. Power set of zero is, first there's an empty, and then there's with just zero in it. There are these two options. Those are the only things in the power set of zero. 
What about in the power set of 0 and 1? Well, we have a few more things. We have the same empty that we did before. We have the same 0 that we did before. We have a 1 on its own, and then we have a 0, 1. So these are our four options, or four elements in the power set of 0, 1. And if we try to look at the connection between these two, one way we might think to get this from this is to take two copies of this original part. Here's my second method for this was a first method of power set, which was just coming up with them in my head. Here's my second method of power set. I'm going to take the previous power set. So in this case, that was the power set of just one element, of zero, and duplicate it. Okay, so that gives me this, oh, oops, this, and this. We're not quite there yet. Now I'm going to add into this half, into only half of it, I'm going to add the new element in my list, or in my set. Add the next or I guess the, the new element in my set to half of the uh, to one copy each each element in one copy of the previous power set. Okay, so we're going to leave one copy of it alone, this copy here as empty and then zero and then the other copy we're going to put a 1 into each of them so this empty one becomes 1 and this one with just 0 in it becomes 0 1 0 1 did this get us the same thing we got before? it did right? empty 0 1 0 1 empty 0 1 0 1 okay let's see if we can do this one more time see if it works so we want to do the power set of 0 1 2 we're going to do the second method this time because it's it's more computationally viable than telling the computer to come up with stuff in its head. So here we're going to take two copies of the original, so so of the previous, right, of this one here. I'm going to copy paste it from here because it's a little easier. I'm going to take two copies of it. First copy, second copy. And then into every single one of these, I'm going to put a 2. Okay, stick a 2 there, stick a 2 there, stick a 2 there. Stick a 2 there. Well, did that work? Do I have all of them? I think I do, right? Because if there are three elements, there should be eight total elements in its power set. So I did it. And then one more time. Oh, does that mean I messed up this one? No, this has three elements too, and then eight, eight outputs. Perfect. We can do it one more time if you, or if, if you want, you can do it one more time on your own. I promise that this method works. Um, because you're, you're duplicating the previous power set and then you're just saying, well, hey, if I have this one extra element, then I can make every single one of the previous elements with this new element in it or with this element not in it. Those are the, the only two options. Every single element in this power set has to either have two or not have two. Same thing with either have one or not have one or either have zero or not have zero. So because of that binary choice, I can just duplicate and add this new element into half. Okay, so we've talked about generating a power set. I'll give you some hints for how to do that in the problem, maybe. Um, remember that function map is helpful for doing something to every element of a list. So if I had a list like, say, empty 0, and I wanted to add a 1 into every element of it, I could map a 1 into every element. I would need a, need a lambda function there. You would probably need to use something like cons. Now let's talk about how this is relevant to all factors. So one clever way to come up with all of the factors 
is to use power set. Um, and the reason that works is because all of the factors of any number can be derived by multiplying its prime factors. So earlier we had the number 24, and we said its prime factorization was 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. And we said that all of its factors were, were uh, 1, or what? Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 12, and 24. Uh, we're going to ignore 1 for now because um, I'm not going to. I think in the problem we probably. Let's see. So 1 is included, but 1 is included in all of them. So that's easier to deal with. For now, we're going to just ignore 1 and say that all of these factors can be made up by multiplying these. Okay? So, I guess technically in your prime factorization, if you considered 1 a factor, you could do something like this. 1 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. But 1 is going to be in all of our all factors, so we're not going to worry about trying to get it from our primes. You're going to have to come up with some other way to make sure that 1 is included in your all factors. But I'll show you that, so 2 equals 2 times nothing, 3 equals 3 times nothing, 4 equals, well we had 2 times 2 in our prime factorization up here, 6 equals, oops, 6 equals 3 times 2, 12 equals 2 times 2 times 3, and then 24 equals 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. Okay, so we can get all the factors other than 1 by multiplying the prime factorization. So it sounds like if we want to write a function in Racket, if we want to write a function in Racket that gets all the factors of a number, given its prime factors, we can power set the prime factors and then so the, the output of that this will give us lists of combinations of factors a list of I'll say multiple factors right so like 2 2 and 3 or 3 and 2 or something like that lists of this will give us every possible list of factors because power set makes every possible subset of a set and then multiply those lists together or not not by each other but multiply the elements of each list together so let me show you what I mean if we had 24 we would take its prime factorization to to 2 and 3, we would get our power set of that, so we would have, well, there's nothing, there's 2, there's 2 and 2, there's 2 and 2 and 2, there's 2 and 3, there's 2 and 2 and 2 and 2 and 3, and there's 2 and 2 and 2 and 3. Is that all of them? Oh, and there's just 3. Is that all of them? I think so. And these would give us, let's make the empty list for now. How about we set that to 1? Because, you know, every single prime factor, every single power set of a prime factorization will have an empty list or an empty set because power sets always have an empty set. So we'll just say that that maps to our 1. Our 2 will go to 2. This will be 4. This will be 8. This will be. Six. Oh, did I miss? Oh my gosh, I missed eight earlier. Oh, don't tell anyone. Wow, that's embarrassing. Okay. Eight equals two times two times two. I messed it up here too, didn't I? Someone's been yelling at their screen this entire time. Lukash, you... Okay. Did I fix it? Did I fix it? Okay. There we go. Two times two times three is twelve. 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 is 24, and then this is 3. I think those are all of our prime fact or all of our factors. Sometimes doing this you will get duplicates, but 
thankfully in Racket there's a function called remove duplicates. So what you're going to do is use power set to generate the power set of all the prime factors. Multiply these lists within themselves. You might want a helper function that turns a list into a number. It takes a list like this and multiplies its elements to get a number. And then remove duplicates and return whatever you get. I hope this helped you with some of the problems in homework one. Sorry for forgetting that 8 is a factor of 24. Please, please don't tell anyone. Uh, thank you for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next one.